What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis and today I wanna to let you know about the Diatone Rabbit 249 HD that we're giving away by the end of the month. You don't have to be a Patreon to win this one. This one's a subscriber giveaway, so just check out the link down below where I have uh, win a Diatone R249 HD in there courtesy of Banggood and Drone Camps. Click that link and it's gonna take you to sort of a, a tech website type of page. You can also click on that, sign up for the giveaway, and you'll be good to go. So um, the drawing will be done by them at the end of this month. Super sweet. We're also having another giveaway on the channel, the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2. It's going to give to one of my lucky Patreons on the channel. So two batteries in there, a 1S and a 2S battery, and all the rest of the gear in there, and an FR Sky, built-in FR Sky receiver. That's that SPI receiver on there. So uh, pretty sweet. This one is ready to go. It's $99 value, and this one is like $180. So good luck to everybody on this month's giveaways. Now on with the main show for today. We're talking about the Diatone Mamba F7 stack here, and they are not dual gyro F7s. They are single gyro F7s on here running the MPU 6000 gyro on board. Um, it is also running 8K, not 32 k so um, 32k is no longer supported inside betaflight they're also both rocking betaflight 3.5.5 on board um, you do not have betaflight 4.0 on there yet but i have been receiving some reports of quads doing really strange stuff with betaflight 4.0 and, and above on there so um, hopefully they get some of that issues worked out we've had some quads take off the ground um, not on their own so very strange activity on 4.0 and above so be careful with that firmware out there and speaking of firmware on here we have mamba firmware by diatone so if you're looking to flash the firmware on either one of these it's going to be the mamba firmware and that's usually the first thing you want to do but honestly if you buy one of these i would fly it with the firmware that's on here right now and give it a couple weeks before beta flight releases the next firmware update um, that way that you don't have any issues with these flight controllers if you're doing a build so uh, on the left hand side we have the mamba f7 this is the super stack this is the 30 by 30 and uh, this has some serious specs we're going to talk about that in a second and this is going to be your 20 by 20 smaller stack that you can run up to 6s both of these can run up to 6s but do not run them without the capacitors that are included in these boxes because if you do run it on 6s Without the capacitor, you risk burning up your ESCs. Um, very important for the build process of both of these flight controllers. Now we're going to start out with this super stack, and we're just going to open this up. Let me show you what's inside. You've got an instruction QR code here, which is pretty cool. And very nice packaging. I like that they did this. This is the schematic layout right here for you on a PCB. How cool is that? It's printed with gold on both sides. So if you want to know what things are around your board, they're not silk screened on the board for this particular board. They're actually on their own labeled PCB. This is not part of it. You're not going to solder anything up to this, obviously, but this is just the layout of everything, all the tabs, even the harness coming up from the ESC right there. That is really, really cool. But we have the F7 22 there. You see on the very top of this list, 5 volt and 9 volt. 2 amp BEC regulator. We've got a 2812 LED controller, SpeedyB Bluetooth, which is super awesome. It will connect to your phone and you can go inside Betaflight. It's sort of a sort of a faux Betaflight um, SpeedyB and it'll let you change the PIDs and do any type of configuration. You can set up a whole quad using SpeedyB, which is really neat. The only thing you can't do at this point is flash firmware with SpeedyB uh, Bluetooth connection, but that way it wirelessly connects to your flight controller from your phone. It's pretty sweet. 16 megabytes of onboard storage and flash for your black box data and 6S LiPo input, which is super sweet. So this one runs from 4 to 6S. Also in the 30 by 30 box, you have some rubber grommets and you can go all the way up and dampen everything. They also give you some silicone dampening here for the flight controller top and bottom. Those just kind of snap right onto each post port right there and they also give you an extra silicone wire harness from your ESC to your flight controller this is pretty sweet right here because uh, if you shear the other one you have a backup for that that's nice to have and inside the box you have an XT60 connector you have some extra wiring right here which is great it's not super super long but you do have enough wire to come off the back of your quad right there and we have one more thing hiding down there and that is our capacitor and let's just check out how many microfarad we have there we have negative on that side, so that would be your negative post, and this would be your positive post. 
and that solders right up to your battery terminal positive and negative right there and sometimes they will put a little hole through the bottom of it you can also come off of the wire itself let's see let's go ahead and zoom right into that capacitor and see what we have here that's 470 microfarad there 35 volts very nice and you have to run this if you're going to run 6s now i mentioned before that the flight controller had no labeling on it but it does have labels along this side and a few over here but let's just go ahead and run through this really quickly this is loaded with things for you to add on this flight controller you can go pretty crazy here you have two options actually five different options for leds uh, first of all you have your standard beta flight controlled leds right here this is this tab you see ground five volt led right there so uh, standard leds can hook up here but on the outside they have these little tabs sticking off the very outside edge right here which does make this a little bit wider than 30.5 by 30.5 um, but this is the the diatone LEDs, 5 volt ground and LED right there. Once you solder those up, they are kind of like um, replaceable LEDs that plug in and unplug out on the arms of your quad. So you can have four of those set up on the outside. They're also pretty wild. They do uh, all kinds of stuff like strobe and change colors. They're really, really nice LEDs. And you can, you can see those on Diatone's website. But um, let's go ahead and get started with the other rail. Over here on the very left, we have some labeling here. We have the receiver rail right here. I'm just going to push that out of the way because we don't need it right now. This is ground 5 volt PPM, which you're not going to use. The S bus right there. And that's where your receiver is going to go. The next four down, we have ground 5 volt TX2 and RX2. If you want to add some crossfire on this baby, you can do that. And over here, we have options for a 2 amp 5 volt or 9 volt regulated current there so it's kind of nice you have 5 volt here and a 9 volt there those are square tabs and the round ones just below it the oval ones are ground and then we have tx3 and we have video there so uh, for your video signal you're going to solder that right there and just below that is our standard beta flight led setup you've got your usb port right there and we have a boot button hiding over here in this corner, an actual physical button instead of the gold button. I believe the gold button's on the 20 by 20 stack. And over here we have a spot for RX3 and TX3 right here and 5 volt and ground there. And now I just set this on top of here so we could see this rail down here. So very far over to the left we have RSSI, TX4, RX4, and those three right there. The next four over are ground 5 volt TX5 rx5 and our last uart down here on this very end ports is ground 5 volt tx6 and rx6 and now we're looking at the very front of the flight controller where the harness comes up from the escs and plugs in right here we have vcc and ground on the outside right there esc signal number one coming up here it's a white wire esc2 esc3 esc4 and then we have rx6 there for your esc telemetry and we have current voltage right there and the next three over are where your camera is going to solder up to you're going to solder your camera signal wire right here it's usually yellow or white ground is going to be your black wire and red for your nine volt wire right there and the next two over are your buzzer negative and positive right there for the beeper on your quad and now you're looking at the bottom we have more labeling on the bottom we also have when the flight controller was made in the factory 12 22 2018 there at the end of last year and these are just now getting out to people so um, it's kind of wild that they took six months to get these out there you also have that mpu 6000 and f7 gyro in the middle right here um, it is running 8k like i said before not 32k and over on this far side we have some more labeled ports on the very bottom if you decide to run your wires up through the bottom just makes it a little tidier and i also just noticed that where they don't have them labeled on the top if you flip it over you have labeling on the bottom so if you somehow lost this little schematic right here you can just refer to the flag controller itself because they're oppositely labeled on the top and bottom here you don't see it but on the top you do kind of nice so now you guys are looking at the 50 amp ESCs and those are capable from 4 to 6S. You can't probably run these without uh, anything under a 4S battery. So keep that in mind, 16.8 volt to 25 volt max. Um, you also have a burst up to 55 amp. Uh, it says 10S there. It does have the current regulator on there and it's running the software on board these ESCs, DSHOT 300, 600, or your choice of 1200. And it is 30.5 by 30.5 mounting points. And 
if we look, they have ESE 1, 2, 3, and 4 there. So you're going to flip the board over like that and look at it. This would be the downside right here. So this is normally how we have it. ESC1 is usually in the right rear, and that looks like the way it is inside Betaflight. So pretty nice looking board. Uh, it also has some pretty nice looking chipsets on here. The MOSFET look really, really nice and clean. You have your current regulator there and your harness outputs there. And what I do like about this ESC is the fact that they did do this harness here, but if this somehow broke, this harness right here, this is plastic, if it broke off, they give you the option to be able to solder directly to the PCB on the board. So that's really, really nice. So now we're gonna check out the Mamba mini stack. This is the little 20 by 20 stack here, and this is everything that comes with this one. This one does have an input voltage from two to six S as well, which is super sweet. So if you're running in this on any type of micro brushless, you can run it on two to three S to four to five to six S, which is pretty crazy on a micro brushless. Or you could put this stack on a five inch race quad if you wanted. Um, you could probably even run this on something like a six inch quad if you want. Uh, we'd have, 306 4 in 1 ESC on here. That is a 30 amp times 4 4 in 1 ESC with a burst up to 35 amp. It does have current regulator on board the ESCs, which is super sweet. It's running the digital software D Shot 600, 300, and uh, 1200 there. And we have the mounting point 20 by 20 M2 screws there. And check this out. They already have it labeled on the very top like the other one. They also give you longer screws here. These are longer posts in case you wanted to extend this up another stack and put some type of 20 by 20 VTX on the very top. You could do that as well or the Run Cam Split Mini 2. We have an extra harness here and those are silicone wires. So super nice there when you're soldering stuff up. If you needed to take this off and solder directly to the board, that is not going to be a problem. Or if you touch this with your iron, it's not going to melt and sort of uh, have these melt together. The old school harnesses were made of plastic wire coating. So I'm glad they're all switching over to silicone wire. You also have some wire for your battery leads. And we have some little soft rubber grommets here. And I don't see that they gave us an XT60 or an XT30 inside this kit so that's one thing to consider there you will need some type of battery connector for this particular flight controller stack and again if you're going to run a 6s on this little board you want to solder this guy on this is 470 microfarad there um, and 35 volt negative on this side and positive on the other don't get these confused or he'll have this thing swell up and pop so now you're looking at the very top of this board and the schematic over here on the right hand side. This is so cool. I hope other companies start to do this. You're obviously not going to put this on the top of your stack when you finish it. Uh, you maybe could do that to protect it a little bit if you wanted to, or you wanted to make a shelf on top of it. That could be an option for adding your receiver sitting up top here. Put a little piece of VHB in your receiver above it. Otherwise you could have your 4-in-1 VTX sitting on top of your video transmitter sitting on top of this with the extra long screws that they gave you, which is kind of a nice option. We have our USB port right here, buzzer ports right here, positive and negative. Down here we have our standard LED rail right there, ground 5 volt LED. And across the very bottom we have our ground 5 volt TX5 and RX5. The next ones over we have ground 5 volt TX6 and RX6. If you wanted to add crossfire on this little guy, you can do that. So up on this top rail up here, we have at the very top where our camera is going to solder to. Those three ports right there is 5 volt ground and camera, just like you see right here. The next four down are 5 volt ground, TX3, and VTX, where your video transmitter signal is going to go just below on that fourth one down. And the next five down, we have where the receiver choice is going to go. Ground 5 volt, PPM, S bus, and we have RSSI at the very bottom right there. And up at the very top here, we have all the way starting over to the far left here, we have ground 5 volt, TX4, and RX4. We have the current regulator, RX2. We have ESC signal number 4, 3, 2, and 1 right there. And we have VCC and ground. That's the power coming up from the ESCs to power your flight controller. And I just flipped this over and we do have six UARTs available on this one as well. They mislabeled SBUS right there, but UART one where I showed you your receiver goes earlier, that's where your SBUS can go. We have a vacant UART two, a vacant UART three, UART four is for your ESC telemetry and your UART five is vacant and your UART six is vacant. 
And now this stack comes pre put together just like this. You can see some silicone dampening in here. So this board should run fairly vibration free on your quad and you have silicone dampeners up inside the flight controller mounting right there and another set of dampening just above that. So um, this board is fully dampened. You can also take some of the extras out of the box and put below here and uh, you want to have another standoff here between your quad and obviously your ESC. So you don't want to touch this to carbon or it'll short out. But the ESCs are clearly labeled on the bottom. We have a little schematic here telling us about all of our currents coming in, uh, our ESC signals one through four right here, TX and the current sensor. And we also have optional tabs right here to solder to in case this port broke off, which is really, really nice. And it has another little tab sticking out right there. If I pull that out, that will actually plug into one of those diatone buzzers. So you wouldn't even have to solder up a buzzer. You can just uh, plug it into one and hide it inside your quad. That's pretty nice. And it does say on the ESC 3 to 6S. So uh, I saw somewhere earlier that it said 2S, but uh, we'll have to clarify that later when I build this up and do some testing for you guys. And we have four 30 amp ESCs, four four and one ESC and software running up to DSHOT 1200, which is pretty sweet. So the actual measurement of this ESC is 2737 by 6.5 millimeters thick there. Now I've got the scale on, I'm gonna go ahead and set the 20 by 20 stack on there first. And we have 11.8 grams. It might be just a few grams more when you add the bottom standoffs on here. So not bad at all. Now let's put the 30 0.5 by 30.5 stack on there and that one does have the bottom standoffs on it we'll see what that weighs 21.6 grams for your flight controller ESCs and everything there so overall I gotta say that both of these boards are looking pretty tidy they have a really nice chipset layout here they have really nice and clearly labeled ports all on both of them I like the fact that they give you plenty of extras in the box. They also give you these schematics, which is super nice that you can do that, or you can add a shelf above the very top of it. Um, they give you a lot of options here, and there's tons of power all the way up to 6S. So I think this is going to be a pretty popular board, especially that it's not running that 32K non-supported gyro rate. Um, this is going to be very compatible with just about any version of Betaflight. But again, I'm going to give you my recommendation and tell you guys to wait on the newer versions of Betaflight until they get that sort of flyaway thing worked out. Um, that's sort of creeping back into Betaflight right now. Uh, so the guys, the developers are going to have to do an update for that coming up pretty soon. But thanks again for watching my channel, you guys, and all my reviews and tips. Uh, I really, I really appreciate you supporting and subscribing on my channel. So good luck to everybody on the giveaways. I'm Justin Davis. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one.